Last time on the channel, we broke down the likes of Mojave King, Josh Giddy, Kwat Noy, and other top prospects to follow in this season's NBL. Today, Lachlan Everett is back to tell us about some other more established players who could potentially make the leap from the NBL in Australia to the NBA in the United States. This is Florence Ceiling. So in the past number of years, especially this last offseason, we've seen a number of guys go from the NBL to the NBA. And I think that this is going to be a trend that continues to advance in the years to come. Um, what do you think about this? And what are your takes on the guys who have already made the leap you know, overseas from Australia to the United States and maybe some other people who might do the same in the future? So we've had two main ones this most recent offseason, Jay Sean Tate, who we've already talked about, and he made the leap over to the Houston Rockets, partly because, you know, Will Weaver went there as well, but that's a good, it's a very good situation for Jay Sean Tate. And the other guy is Will Magne, your um, shot blocking three-point shooter who's on the G League and or two-way player for the New Orleans Pelicans. So those are your two most recent guys. And there's a trend, there's a sort of trend that's going to happen here. Young Australians who show promise and, and Americans were getting their feet wet overseas. So the first guy is Mitch Creek, who was with the Timberwolves, no, with the, um, the Brooklyn Nets and then the Timberwolves in the 18-19 season. And those were multiple 10 days. And then he came back to the NBL and played for the new franchise, the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix, and then also played with the World Cup team and was a pretty good piece there. So... There was a hot rumor here and there. I think it was just before the bubble that Mitch Creek was going to sign with the Golden State Warriors because they were hard capped and they could get him really cheap to be in three and D wing. But he's only like 27. I think he has real chops to be a three and D player in the NBA. He did that in his, I don't know, maybe 40 days in the NBA. And I think he can do it again, big time. Um, the other Aussie would be Jock Landell, which is a, huge signing for Melbourne United. He was on a European team and got bought out by Melbourne United. He's only 25 and he's probably one of the big, best big men in Europe. And now he's playing in the NBL. So those numbers are going to go way up and he's going to get way more opportunity in Melbourne. And I don't see him not being in the NBA sooner rather than later. And, and what do you got about those guys? So with Creek, I know that I was hearing a lot about him. Um, I went to university on Long Island, New York. So when he was with the Nets G League team, the Under Long Island Will Nets, Weaver. he was, yeah, he was putting up huge numbers basically yeah. on a nightly basis. And as you said, it translated eventually into him getting those 10-day contracts in the league. And with Lawndale, I have to admit, I haven't watched a lot of his stuff in Europe. Um, obviously, I've read about it and heard about it. But I know that when he was coming out of college, the biggest concern in terms of NBA role and production was that he was maybe a guy who relied on posting up too much on playing, you know, with his back to the basket and that it wasn't a great fit for the modern NBA based on what you've seen. Do you think that those concerns? That's not an issue valid? anymore. I'm telling you, that's not an issue anymore. This man can play like, so we'll see it with United, right? But, Put it this way, the Boomers are your best Australians. Paddy Mills, Daly, Joe Ingles, Andrew Bogut. The other starter was Jock Landell. He was one of the best five players for the Boomers last season. He, in all honesty, will be the starting centre if Baines can't play or they're going to reduce his role with the Boomers. He could start for a national team and an international competition, I don't see him not having a role in the NBA. He could do a bit of everything. He showed that in the preseason. And I cannot wait to see him tear up the NBL because he will. There is no doubt about it. All right. Well, I'll be definitely keeping an eye on Lawndale on Creek as well, who's, you know, he's been balling out everywhere the past number of years. Um, and hopefully by this time next year on the channel, we'll be talking about how they've made the leap to the NBA. And talking and about the got, next guys who do it. <laughs> we got the draft and stash guys. I'll go over quickly. Justinian Jessup, who we've talked about. He 
was putting up huge numbers in the preseason for the Hawks. Mm -hmm. He was drafted off the top of my head, 53rd by the Golden State Warriors. So he will be a draft and stash for the Hawks. And he's already looking like he's just going to put up numbers big time. So Warriors fans, keep an eye on him. Um, And then the other guy is Didi Lazada, who was a draft and stash last season with the Sydney Kings and has retained his next star contracts who will play a second season. Um, he does a little bit of everything, bit of a playmaker, bit of a scorer. Um, hope he's going to have a bigger role this season in Sydney with Bogut gone and um, Xavier Cooks injured. So Pelicans fans, keep an eye on him. I assume he'll be brought over at the end of the year with the G League and then he'll come with the Pelicans a bit. So he's going to be exciting. And if you want the J. Sean Tate of NBL 2021, it's going to be Cam Oliver. He's the guy I would put money on if I bet as the American who gets to the NBA next. He's only 24 years old. He's younger than Tate. He's a 6'8", 6'7", center in the NBL, and he's explosive. Both ends of the floor, he can dunk, he can block, he can post up. He can, as you can imagine, if you put him with Scott Machado, that's all they did last season. (laughs) <laughs> lob runs all the time so he's only going to get smarter he's only going to get better he's got a three-point shot i'm not saying he's going to make it every time but it is a threat so if you want one guy who's going to be your american who gets over there that's going to be cam oliver he's going to be that small ball imagine a not as like you know daniel tice as your nail defender defends the paint right. i'm saying he's going to be your six eight explosive Robert Williams. I'm like, that's the sort of thing, but more polished. Thank you, Lachlan, for coming on and sharing with us some of your knowledge about the NBL, which is undoubtedly one of the fastest rising leagues in the world. I'm sure there will be plenty more of NBL action to cover in the next few months. And as always, stay tuned and make sure to follow Lachlan and all his social media below. I have all his links in the description, his Twitter, his Hoops Habit articles, all of that good stuff. So make sure you give him a follow. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, comment on what you think are some of the most interesting NBL storylines and players to follow this season, and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your support, and I'll catch you guys next time.